Hey guys, before the video starts, uh, this one took forever to get edited. Don't think the poor laptop can handle it anymore, because it ate the footage and audio for this one at least twice. So we're going to be switching to a proper PC setup soon before I yank my hair out. And with PC comes the possibility for messing with some Monster Hunter mods. If you guys know of any fun and or hunting horn related ones, feel free to let me know in the comments. With that out of the way though, let's get into it. What's up guys, Kplace here. In this video, we're going to get into what I'd like to see in a future hunting horn moveset. But to explain my thought process, what I want you all to do is bear with me for a bit and try a little thought experiment. Imagine that, in an effort to build on the lore of the series, the creators of Monster Hunter are making a documentary on the history of hunters. Part of that project is explaining how each of the 14 weapons came to be used today. For example, maybe Insect Glaive was originally a tool used by a culture that raises giant bugs as part of their lifestyle. Or a blacksmith, an engineer, and an inventor walked into a bar, and eventually the first Switch X prototypes hit the hunting grounds. Something like that. How do you guys think the first hunting horn users came to be? I mean, there has to be some sort of story behind how smacking monsters in the face with giant metal bagpipes came to be a legitimate option for hunters to pick, right? Well, in my head, hunting horn fighting had to have come from deep tribal roots. There's a sort of primal traditional nature to it when you think about it. A lot of those attacks would fit equally as dances, just as they do in combat. And there's gotta be another reason besides insanity or showboating to be playing music right while a monster is actively trying to eat you. The earliest hunting horns might not have been weapons at all, more like huge ceremonial totem poles that made noise when air blows through them. Before setting out, warrior shamans of the Duke clan would dance and play music to hype themselves up and pay tribute to their ancestors for blessings during the hunt. Other hunter cultures would eventually come into contact with these people and, after seeing the results this morale boosting tradition brought to the clan, probably ask questions along the lines of, hey, not to insult your practices or anything, and don't know if you guys noticed, but your instruments are freaking huge, and you almost took my head off with that last dance move. You ever consider doing that, but like, during the hunt? Come with us. History goes here, things and events, things and events, and then boom, the early framework for what modern hunter horn is today started being laid. The reason I had this thought is because, in a way, the weapon's in-game evolution kind of mirrors that headcanon if you think about it. For as long as it's existed, Hunting Horn's personality comes out in three distinct ways. Dance-like movements, sound-based abilities, and obviously, playing music. As generations of games progressed, you find that those three things have slowly branched out and evolved in different ways. That might be due to either different regions building their own styles, or the original style evolving as years go on. Poke Village Hunters have the earliest, most simplistic variation of Hunting Horn fighting. Left swing, right swing, super pound, the triple hilt stab, and a few basic recital moves. Since the fighting style was in such early stages, it had a pretty big flaw that hadn't been worked out yet. Since they hadn't ironed out a way to transition seamlessly between music and combat, they had to go into a dedicated stance and string together their songs one note at a time. Doing this right in the middle of a fight was definitely ballsy, but also pretty impractical and dangerous. Yukimo Village Hunters figured out a much better way of handling their horns. By playing notes with every swing and only stopping for full songs when they were ready, they cut down on the time they spent in what I like to call the hunting horn shuffle. Adding this song playing method, the forward smash, the back slam, and encore attacks into the repertoire was proof that their experience was improving on the basics. Current hunting horns fighting still uses most of their techniques to this day. Moga Village Hunters didn't do much besides trying to play their music underwater. We don't talk about them much, they were kinda weird. Reports say most of them drowned. The traveling hunters in the fourth generation, on the other hand, were all about picking up new techniques and further pushing that combat efficiency. First by adopting the flourish to get notes in faster, and then by figuring out a way to double up their song effects as long as they landed their attacks. A lot of them also tried different ways of approaching using the weapon, which led to five new experimental combat styles. Ironically, even without that system, this happened again for hunting horn users in the fifth generation. Over in the New World, Research Commission and Fifth Fleet Hunters were living up to their role as explorers by breaking new ground on hunting horn's uses. Their focus on expanding the ways you can use the musical aspect of the weapon resulted in a lot of new recital techniques for both music and combat and the Sonic Smash Hunter art paved the way for a damaging sound bursts that become a normal tool in Hunting Horn's arsenal. The Hunters and Kimura, on the other hand, they probably looked back at those first few war dances around the village bonfire and decided that they couldn't pass up on going all out in that aspect, with a modern twist. Those wild movements became a full-time thing instead of something they only do during recitals, borrowing and adapting the flashiest parts of all the past styles. As a trade-off though, well let's just say that if Hunting Horn was school, these students got much better grades in PE than they did in music class. As a result of trading away the traditional recital methods for more fast and easy techniques, their songs were weaker and less varied. On top of that, swinging around such a heavy weapon so wildly meant that they couldn't mix up their attacks quite as freely or deliberately. Those things have weight to them, so there's a limit on how fast they can be moved without starting to lose more precise control. They did come up with a few useful new songs that older hunters hadn't thought of before though, and using Wirebug Silk allowed them to get a lot more creative with their sound waves. Now you might be asking yourself, 
How does this all relate to making a moveset for wilds? Well, like we did in the first video, we have to look at the past to build up the future. We've seen a ton of changes between the earliest iteration to the most recent redesign, and every single version, and I mean every single version, still has songs, dances, and sound abilities. We haven't even talked about the way Frontier passed up on the 3rd gen rework in favor of an expanded version of 2nd gen's Hunting Horn, Monster Hunter Online also replacing the song mechanics like Rise did, or even Monster Hunter Explorer heavily simplifying things for playing the game on your phone. Think about it this way. You can't really have a weapon based on music and dance and not expect several different expressions of it. If jazz trumpet and classical violin, or ballet and pop locking are different and the same in their respective categories depending on the context, the same can really be said of any version of Hunting Horn too. Now on that note, let's talk about possibilities for the future. Hunting Horn has gotten a lot of song mechanic tweaks over the years, but we're going to save talking about those specifically for another video. As far as the basic gameplay goes, things have been largely constant since Portable 3rd. Beauty and simplicity. Attacks string together in different ways to create no combos, which create songs that you play with recitals. It's pretty safe to say that this is more or less the core of Hunting Horn. Anytime a game strays from this, even a little bit, there's a chunk of the Hunting Horn fan base that isn't too happy about it. Iceborne, for example, sometimes catches flack over focusing a little bit too much on Echo Attack spam for damage. Freedom Unite hasn't really been particularly missed since the 3rd gen rework. And Rise had a couple more tone depth changes. Okay, okay, last time, I swear. For a music-based weapon in a game like Monster Hunter that doesn't give you straight-up magic to use, I personally picture something more along the lines of the stylish new version we just got. But remember, we're talking strictly movesets here, not mechanics. Beating your enemies to the beat of your own music has to be an inherently stylish playstyle, and while you could snag a few cool moments with the older, more deliberate moveset, that came with practice rather than always being by design. We can't deny that a new version has a certain flair to it that just isn't there in any previous ones. On the other hand though, the quote-unquote new moveset actually isn't fully new, and for that matter, it's not much faster than the old one either. Most of the old moves are still there, and if you compare them side by side with World, they're identical in speed too. If you count the whole animation's commitment, this goes for a lot of the new ones as well. What makes Rise feel faster is the fact that more often than not, you're hitting multiple times per button press, either with the actual swing or extra sound bursts. The Flourish has been doing the same thing since 4th gen, so that's not totally unheard of. A lot of people don't like how waitlist this can sometimes make Hunting Horn feel though, and that makes sense. We can assume that there at least has to be a few hollow parts in them to make noise with, but horns definitely still have some mass to them and you should absolutely be able to feel that while you're using them. If you're swinging something this heavy around, you're going to be regularly taking turns throwing your whole body into each movement and letting the momentum of that action drag you along for the ride. That lends itself really well to the dancing feel of the weapon, but the physical movement and the impactfulness both have to be there for it to all feel right together. If we go too heavy, Hunting Horn just becomes different hammer, and if we go too light, it becomes blunt dual blades. We don't really want either, especially since hammer also shows its extra weight by dealing more damage per hit. Hunting Horn doesn't hit as hard, and it really can if you're trying to balance the two, so naturally it should hit a bit more often instead. Sound bursts are a nice quick fix for this because they can add those quote unquote weightless extra hits on top of weighty physical swings to increase Hunting Horn's attack frequency without making you feel like you're no longer swinging a heavy weapon, but we'll get to that in a bit. Speaking of the flourish though, we can't talk old versus new without acknowledging the fact that Rise didn't just add moves, it replaced some. It hurts the free-flowing nature of the weapon to lose attacking options, and for that matter, to not have almost every option available at any point in the combo like it did before. I'd like to keep pretty much all our options in there, but the issue we run into is that there aren't quite enough buttons to give every attack an easily accessible input, especially if you add switch skills to the mix. Because of that, we have to make a few compromises. First, I'd make one of the few move replacements in my personal version and retire forward smash in favor of Crush. They have a near identical place in Hunting Horn's toolkit as a forward travel and gap closer, but Crush is an improvement in pretty much every way. Setting cool points aside for a second, the recovery on the animation is a lot faster, and more importantly, it allows you to change direction you're facing at any point during the combo. This makes it great for adjusting your positioning on the fly and linking together moves. As long as gameplay encourages you not to spam the same moves, and motion values are balanced out it doesn't become literally every other move you do, I think this change will work out for the better. Next, even though I said that Hunting Horn being able to use almost any move at any time is a key feature of its gameplay, we're going to cheat a little bit and add combo paths. Don't worry though, they won't be nearly as set as so it is rises. Think more like Axis and Nico attack in Iceborne. Starting with World's moveset as a base, after any attack you'll be able to hold back plus an input to use a shortcut move. To keep the animation transitions consistent and to keep a new rise move, this will be either a hilt stab if the last attack would have ended with your horn on your shoulder, or a kick up if it ended with your horn on the ground. After that, neutral and or forward inputs would allow you to use typical old school moves, but another back input on the other hand would give you the rise moves instead. For both function and style reasons, I'd probably choose multi crush for note 2 and double swing for note 3. Apologies to anyone who likes melodic slap, it doesn't really do anything for you for how awkward that animation is. 
Node 1 would be the only exception without another move, since you need your input free to be able to do a crush in any direction. All of this would more or less put us right where we were before when it comes to free move access. I'd assume that the devs put the set combo pass into Rise for the sake of animating cleaner transitions between attacks, but in the same game we also have Echo Mode's cord outright teleport your horn from one hand to the other, so seeing things between frames is clearly on the table. Alternatively though, we could also make knowing which moves combo together cleanly part of mastering this new version of Hunting Horn. Following momentum on your swings would make moves flow, fighting it would make them slow. Be formless, shapeless, like water. A perfect example of this in World would be the difference between doing a forward recital on its own, or linking it straight out of a ground slamming move. Old players want intricacy and new players want smooth comboing ability, well there's something for both groups to use. Lastly, I want to add something totally unique for the sound aspect. If you've ever played Hunting Horn in Iceborne, you probably noticed that after using an echo attack, your horn would glow with this wispy sound wave effect afterward. Here's what I'm wondering though, am I the only one who caught on to the fact that this meant absolutely nothing? Back after the demo dropped, I thought maybe it adds some sort of new special effect or damage boost or something while it was there, but no, it just kinda existed until you either played an Echo Note song or used enough regular attacks to push it out of your queue. It always bugged me a little that they added this and then made it a purely visual thing, and that the word Echo at any time they've ever used it for Hunting Horn doesn't actually refer to actual Echoes. So let's fix that, shall we? Enter the Echo Meter. This special mechanic will replace both the Inferno Melody Meter on Rise Hunting Horn and the Echo Notes on Iceborns. As you use certain specific attacks, the sound effects of your swings are either build or use of vibrations within your horn. Assuming that Wild's trailer theories are correct and the slinger is back, the left trigger will need to be free for using that, but there are still a few button combos available for some new tricks. Because it hasn't been repurposed enough already, left trigger plus X would be the echo attack, renamed to echo spin. To compensate for being able to be used more freely and to avoid it taking over hunting horn's damage output again, I'd probably lower the power on this a bit. Instead of adding echo notes like before, this move would build a small amount of your echo meter. All recital attacks would build up much more, with the exception of the left trigger plus A special recital, which we'll get into later. Aside from this, you can use up the meter in two ways, with echo waves or echoing strikes. Echo waves would essentially be Sunbreak's Silkbind Shockwave effect for extra sound bursts on every swing, activating once you filled the echo meter and slowly draining it with each sound burst until it's empty. Echoing Strike, on the other hand, would be a heavy attack that takes a chunk of the meter using left trigger plus A, and would temporarily transfer echoes to your target. This shakes monsters right down to their bones and causes them to bounce back the sounds of your recitals, replaying the song effect and hurting them in the process. You can choose to either use this effect for as long as it's up, or remove it with another Echoing Strike input. If you do, instead of using the first half of Earthshaker's animation, you'll use the second to do all the damage at once with a loud sonic boom. Basically, it's Earthshaker, Beat of Resonance, and Sonic Bloom all rolled into one move. The whole concept of sound as an offensive tool is a very unique thing for Hunting Horn, and it really grew with Silkbind attacks. This echo mechanic is basically going to be my way of future-proofing them for games without wire bugs. Without going in any further into the rest of the mechanics I have planned, this would pretty much be my dream basic Hunting Horn moveset. My aim here was to preserve as much of the old playstyle features and the new fanciness as I can, which will become really apparent in the next part. Fusing the old, weighty, and methodical freestyling with the new smoothly flowing combos allows you to be deliberate, imprecise, or all-out aggressive depending on the moment. Most importantly though, I'm putting a heavy emphasis on recitals being your main focus during combat. The combined moveset has decent attack variety, so you'll be able to stock notes exactly the way you want to, and with the echo meter providing a huge source of extra damage, you'll need to use your recitals wisely and frequently to keep it filled. How exactly will recitals work though in my version? Do I expect players of the K-Play's Dream Hunting Horn to be constantly living in the Hunting Horn Shuffle? Or maybe spamming quick recitals like Rise and Sunbreak? Well, you'll just have to wait until the next part, won't you? There's a lot I want to go over there too when it comes to what we've seen so far and what I'd like to see, and I feel like even though they're also attacks, recitals are tied just a little more to the song system than they are to the basic moveset. Without knowing much about those though, how do you guys like what we got going so far? Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments, or share your own wish list for a future moveset. Since I'm leaving things on a bit of a cliffhanger with this one, I'll be working on getting the next video out ASAP. Until then though, this has been another K-Plays and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.